Okay, back with another video. So, I expect to get more of these done today, but just been really busy, I guess. Uh, there's no gas um, nearby, so I had to like figure that whole thing out and go find gas today with the hurricane and everything. And then I some of the places finally got water, even though the hurricane's going to the Carolinas now. So... Yeah, just been really strange day. Been pretty busy moving stuff around the house and everything. So, but been meaning to get through some of these. I know this is only gonna be like the third video. So again, I don't know how many of these I'm gonna get done. Like, I definitely am not gonna finish before Thursday. Um, but I am off the next couple of days, so you know, maybe I'll get half of them done. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I guess since we start in the back, we're slowly weaving our way down. So today is Rich's team, who drafted 12th uh, right behind me. So first round, 12th pick, you took Dalvin Cook. I I like Dalvin Cook. I am a fan. He can be a good player. Um, he's been injury prone in his time in Minnesota, uh, which is probably the reason why he hasn't... He, the reason why he's never really shown himself to be like a top five fantasy running back, but... In the two years that he's been in Minnesota, he has been very good when he's been healthy. Um, and really, at this point in the draft, we're talking like, what, back in first round? You had seen all the running backs come off the board earlier in the draft. Uh, so you probably were wise to take a running back here, knowing that the people behind you are probably going to take running backs as well. Um, so I can't really argue with it. I think at that moment in time, Cook was probably the best. Well... I think I think around the eighth or ninth pick, Hopkins uh, would be a better pick than some of the running backs that were taken. So value wise, I think Hopkins would be a better player. But I can understand wanting to take Cook, seeing as everyone's taking running backs and we're a running back needy league. So you reach for the need, and I'm okay with it because. For you, unlike some of the teams ahead of you, or teams behind you, Cook was a good was a good find. I have him as the eighth best running back in fantasy this year, so that's that's pretty good. Like Saquon, McCaffrey, Kamara, Connor, Elliott, Bell, Johnson. I have Cook ahead of Chubb. I have Cook ahead of Gurley. Um, I have Cook again uh, ahead of Mixon, uh, Carson. Um, so yeah, I mean, all those guys went in the first round. I have Cook ahead of them. So best pick on the board. Totally dig it. Totally get it. Hopefully he stays healthy. Um, I'm surprised you didn't take his handcuff later on considering his injury history, but Cook's a good player when he's healthy. They're going to a run heavy offense now with Stefanski, Ed Stefanski as the offensive coordinator, because that's what Mike Sim Zimmer, the head coach, wants to do. I don't agree with it, but for fantasy reasons, that makes Cook valuable. So, yeah, good good choice, solid choice, good start to the draft. Second pick. So, this tells me immediately that <laughs> you are not paying attention to the chat um, very much. Uh, maybe you were, um, but... If you were, then you were just simply ignoring some of the discussion that was going on. Because um, you took Antonio Brown. Uh, and you took Antonio Brown with like the 17th pick. So we're snaking back around. Um, you know, like uh, Brian had taken Carson. And he had taken uh, Michelle. And then Patrick took Hopkins. So you're just like, oh, I want to take a wide receiver too. Now, considering the board, and I obviously behind you, I took OBJ. I think taking a wide receiver was the right call. I just don't think you took the right wide receiver. Now, maybe you don't want to take OBJ um, because he's been injured the last few years, which he has. He's very risky. So maybe you're just like, eh, I don't really want to take that risk. Um, and Antonio Brown has been terrific. Uh, six years running, he's been a top top three receiver. Um, just super duper bankable. But circumstances change. 
He is in Oakland now. He has been whining about his helmet. Uh, he had frostbite on his feet. He hasn't practiced with the team yet. He didn't play in any of the preseason games. He hasn't even called a pass in practice from quarterback David Carr. And they're just going to trot him out week one and hope him and Carr find some chemistry when they've never played together after playing with Big Ben his entire career? Really? Really? I mean, is Antonio Brown the most talented player on the Oakland team? Yeah. Is he going to get a tremendous amount of target share and probably soak up like a third of the targets on that passing offense and the offense is going to be built around him? I'd agree with that too. But is that... What are we talking here? Like, we went from a very efficient pass-oriented team in Pittsburgh that had a good offensive line that knew how to pass block with a quarterback that's probably going to the Hall of Fame, with a head coach that's probably going to the Hall of Fame. And now we're in Oakland with a coach who had a really bad year um, and hadn't coached in 10 years prior, with a quarterback who might have had an MVP season three years ago but does not seem to fit the offense that the coach is pushing him into uh, with an offensive line that is above average um, but highly overpaid and not much depth with a bad offensive line coach by the way really bad offensive line coach and with a rookie running back so these are very very different circumstances okay Oakland Pittsburgh super different circumstances um, and that bakes in a lot of the risk with Brown I mean if he's act, acting this kind of, I don't know, we'll call it wacky. If he's acting this wacky after I paid you $30 million, you're, you're not practicing, you're complaining about your helmet, you accidentally freeze your feet in cryotherapy, you complain about your helmet a second time to have a second arbitration hearing, you don't play in any of the preseason games, you don't practice with the team, you don't go to any of the team meetings, like... If you do all of this after I pay you and before the season even starts, what happens if we start like two and five or like, I don't know, three and seven? What happens when the season goes bad? Because I don't see Oakland season going well. They're in the same division as the Chargers and the Chiefs. So I can't imagine them having a winning record. So yeah, that's not, these are, none of these things are good signs, okay? Now, all of that's off the field, I agree with that. On the field, he's super talented, I agree with that too. But if you'd been paying attention in our chat, you would have known, I had Antonio Brown ranked as the 30th best player probably in fantasy. I had him as like an early, mid, third round pick. I don't think anyone, except for maybe Robbie, was considering taking Brown in the second round. Uh, not a single person. Um, Devontae Adams with Aaron Rodgers, super safe, super consistent. Uh, Julio. I mean, Andre doesn't is not a fan of Julio, but Julio's been a top five receiver every year since his third year in the league. So he's very consistent. Um, Michael Thomas, 100 catches every year, leads the league in targets. Tyreek Hill had a monster year, even if you don't like OBJ, who I took, because I like upside, and you don't want to do that, you want to play a little safer, that's fine. Even if you don't want to do that, there were quite a few other receivers on the board that I like more than Brown. I I don't like this for the value. Um, you could have been Vivian all the way at the back, uh, and she ended up with Julio Jones somehow magically. And she could have taken Antonio Brown, and I still probably wouldn't have liked the pick very much uh, for the value. And so I say to you, Rich, for the value, I don't think this was a good pick. I think Brown is not, I don't want to say struggle, but he's probably going to start the season off slow. I mean, I can't imagine he's going to have any real rapport with Oakland. I also can't imagine any t other team is really going to not double cover him either because um, they don't like Tyrell Williams is the number two wide receiver. He was really good in 
with the Chargers. That doesn't really mean anything to me. So, is Derek Carr accurate enough to get Antonio Brown the ball 100 times? I hope so. I just, there's a lot of baked in risks at this, and it's unnecessary risks. At least the reason why, like, Odell, again, I'm harping on Odell Beckham, but I took him right after you. So I'm trying to just compare the notes. The reason why I like Odell Beckham so much is because he went from a mediocre offense with the Giants to a highly optimized, efficient offense with the Browns, who seem very willing to make him the centerpiece of their team and to feed him the ball consistently. And I think his talent is otherworldly. I think he's one of the top five talents in the NFL. I think he could go to the Hall of Fame one day. I think Antonio Brown's already a Hall of Fame player, but... We went from a very, basically, it's the opposite. We went from a very efficient, good offense with a Hall of Fame quarterback, with a Hall of Fame coach who knows what they're doing, is very consistent, and we went to a bad team. And not just a not very good team, a very bad team. A very bad team with a below average coach and maybe even a worse quarterback with a rookie running back and no other real weapons to speak of. So... Those are bad circumstances. And then he doesn't practice with the team the entire offseason. He doesn't play in any preseason games. He freezes his feet. He has two arbitration hearings about his helmet. He's just going to sue him up next Sunday, catch 10 balls, get 100 yards and a touchdown. I mean, maybe. He's great. He can route run. I just... There's too much risk. There's too much risk. And so that's why I have him as my, you know, eighth best receiver. I just think there were better receivers on the board. I think he'll have a solid year. I, I don't have him outside the top ten. Um, I think he's a tremendous player. I think he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. I just think there were safer picks. I don't know if you want to play it safe. Maybe you want to go for the upside. But then I think you would have been better off, even if you don't like Odell, maybe Tyreek Hill who's got monster upside in that Chiefs offense that just scored, you know, Mahomes just went was a monster last year. Maybe you think, like, Michael Thomas, who just gets fed by Drew Brees, is really, really good. Like, I don't love Michael Thomas, but Michael Thomas is probably the safest pick among all of the wide receivers. You're guaranteed a top four receiver no matter what. Now, he might not have, like, super high-end number one receiver win a championship, but... Top four receivers bankable. Antonio Brown's variance of outcomes, he could be the number one receiver. Or he could just be like, yeah, no, we're two and five. I don't give a damn. And he just packs it in. What do you do? So there's just a lot of risk with this. I know I'm harping on this. I've probably talked for over 10 minutes about this pick. But this is just kind of indicative, I hope, of just like my evaluations of players and why I didn't like this pick. And it's kind of indicative of the way your draft kind of went. Um, But we'll get into that, I guess, now. So next pick, we go for James White. I don't hate James White. I mean, we've mentioned I don't like running backs by committee. So I typically don't like Eagles. Um, I typically don't like Patriots. Um, Those are really the two biggest, like, running back by committee teams. Most of the other teams are, like, duos. Like, you know, like Matt Breida, Tevin Coleman, or we have, like, bell cow backs, like Dalvin Cook. So we got a committee guy. You need a running back. Uh, it was pretty obvious. There were running backs going left and right. Um, so you're just going to take the best one on the board. So I can understand that in some sense. Um, and for you, that was James White. I like White. I like his role he has in that backfield. I think that considering where you were and considering you need a running back, um, he might have been, I mean, the safest pick because he's the pass-catching back in the Patriots offense. So you know he's going to get the ball at least eight game, eight times a game, receive it, you know, maybe have a few rushes here and there. He'll probably score like five, six touchdowns on the season. He's very, very safe, um, and he has that role. I just don't know what the injury concerns, if that's where I wanted to go, but I understand the pick. It's sensible. It's a sensible pick. Um and you were kind of, I don't know, there weren't a lot of other, like, I don't know if you want to go high on Eckler because you're worried about Melvin Gordon. I don't know if you're looking at another receiver maybe because you end up taking Brandon Cooks. 
So maybe you liked Mike Evans, Robert Woods, but you were afraid you need a running back here. I'm not sure what your thought process was here, but I will say White was probably the safest pick. Uh, he was probably the best player on the board as a running back, um, and he has an established role, even if it is in a committee that I don't like. Uh, I can under It's a sensible pick. So it's kind of like Cook, sensible pick. I like him as my number two running back. Um, so that's not bad. I don't love it. Don't hate it. Um, then we go to Brandon Cooks. Again, pick. I like, I like Brandon Cooks. I have him as the 16th best receiver uh, in fantasy probably this upcoming year. So he's just outside the top 15, which isn't bad. I mean, considering the fact that I think Brian reached for Robert Woods and Mike Williams, and I have Cooks ahead of both of them. Yeah, no. Cooks is tremendous. Um, I think he will be the number one receiver for the Rams. I don't care about Cooper Cup. I don't care about Robert Woods. I think Brandon Cooks is the number one receiver. I think there's a reason the Patriots traded for Brandon Cooks. And there's a reason why he was drafted by the Saints. And it's because he has talent. Um, he's a very, very good player. Um, there's a reason he got that monster contract from the Rams. So, again, if that's my number two receiver, we're building a pretty solid team, Rich. This is this is going pretty well. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it's pretty good. Uh, as far as this core, it's, it's it's one of the better cores probably in the league, to be honest. Um, but then things get a little well, not yet. Things get a little weird soon, but that's yeah, okay. So then, with your next pick, you take Rashad Penny. Um, I think this was. Because you took Cooks and Brown, so you went two wide receivers in the first four rounds, and whereas some teams went three running backs in the first four um, because they were just like collecting depth, you there wasn't a lot on the board um, as far as running backs, and you had noticed probably at this point it's like oh maybe it's time to get a running back, and there were a raw a lot of running backs basically taken in between you getting Cooks and then this pick of Penny, so like. We can go through it. I took Duke Johnson. Uh, there is Kenyon Drake. There's Austin Eckler. There's Darius Geis. There's Latavius Murray. There's Tevin Coleman. There's Royce Freeman. Um, Miles Saunders I took right ahead of you. So you would probably notice by this point, fifth round, let me find a running back. Uh, let me draft a running back who I think can really – possibly fill a hole. Um, so I mentioned this in Brian's video. Carson, I think, is the better player, despite the fact that Rashad Penny was the first-round pick last year. I think Carson's the better player. Um, but Carson has injury concerns. I don't have those kind of concerns with Penny. Uh, Penny isn't very much of a patch catcher. They're trying to do that more with Carson. Um, but Penny is a good player. I think... They drafted him too high when they drafted him out of San Diego State. Uh, but he can be – he can – Carson is that workhorse guy who you can give the ball quite often and he doesn't fumble the ball and he's very safe and secure and he gets you – he consistently does his thing. Penny's the kind of guy who can break one open. He's really the one who can just like turn a game on its head very quickly. Um, so I think the timeshare is going to be like 60-40, Carson Penny. But – Fifth round, considering where the running backs were going, it's, again, I think this is another sensible pick. Um, I'm glad that you took a running back here and you didn't take one of the receivers um, because I think this was probably... I have him as my 38th running back, so I know that sounds really, really low, but there were a lot of running backs taken, man. It's like the fifth round. So... I don't know if you could have gotten any better considering everything that was going on around you. Um, I mean, maybe I consider Matt Breida in hindsight um, now that I know he's the starter in San Francisco. Um, you know, but hindsight's twenty twenty. So, yeah, I think I like the Penny pick. I will say, though, I would not have Penny as your flex. But it's not because I don't like Penny. Um, it's actually because I love your next pick. Uh, your next pick is Tyler Lockett, and I think that was the best pick you had in the draft. Um, 
this is the pick where I felt like, man, you really, you really sniped the guy I wanted. You real because I like Miles Saunders. I took him in the fifth round because I like. I mean, we'll go into my video, but I like Miles Saunders. That's all I need to say. But I had quite a few wide receivers on the board. I ended up taking Josh Gordon, but Lockett was the one I wanted. This was the one player you sniped from me. Lockett is really good. Okay, people forget last year on Vivian's team that, you know, Vivian made the finals, and people were just like, she, Andre calls her the glass cannon because, you know, she doesn't provide the depth around her team, and she usually relies on her stars, and when they break apart, the team falls apart. And she lost Kareem Hunt, um, basically going th getting ready for the playoffs. So the thinking was, you know, the team's going to fall apart. But funny thing happened. So while, you know, she was relying heavily on Tyreek Hill, she did have a number two player. The number two player was Tyler Lockett. Now, people have talked about they don't believe that his touchdown efficiency will keep up like he did last year. Um, but I read a lot. In fact, Sarah will tell you how much I read. So I read a lot of, like, Warren Sharp's football preview. Big fan of his. Um, analytics, all that. Short version is this. Russell Wilson is the best deep ball thrower in the NFL. Um, on top of that, DK Metcalf, who they draft in the first round, is injured. Jerron Brown, who was also in the starting lineup, got cut today. Jimmy Graham is gone and in Green Bay. That happened last year. I don't know if anyone noticed. And even though the Seahawks run the ball more so than any other team in the league, Doug Baldwin also retired. Can you name me any other receivers on the Seahawks other than Tyler Lockett? If you can, I'll give you credit. But that just goes to show how big Tyler Lockett is to that passing offense. So people say his touchdown efficiency is unsustainable because he was basically scoring touchdowns every game. My response to that is maybe, but... Have you seen anybody else on the team? I don't see anyone else catching the ball. I mean, I guess Chris Carson or Rashad Penny. But Lockett is the clear, undisputed number one receiver on a Seahawks team with a quarterback who is hyper-efficient at throwing the ball downfield. He's so hyper-efficient at throwing the ball downfield that they should probably be throwing the ball 60% of the time and running the ball 40 instead of running the ball 52% of the time and passing 48. He's so hyper-efficient throwing the ball downfield that it's comparable to Dan Marino's 80, 80 Dan Marino's team that he took all the way to the Super Bowl. He's hyper, hyper-efficient, Russell Wilson, at throwing the ball downfield. And he has no one to throw the ball downfield to except for Tyler Lockett. I really like Lockett this year. I think what happened in the back end of last year is sustainable. Uh, not just because of opportunity, because no one else is there, but also because he's in the right circumstances for it to occur. Uh, especially with a quarterback who is really, really good at getting him the ball. Like, people have tried to tell me, oh, well, you know, I really like T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton has Jacoby Brissett, okay? Jacoby Brissett's a nice player. He ain't Andrew Luck. All right, I'm taking Tyler Lockett with Russell Wilson over T.Y. Hilton, even if I think T.Y. Hilton is the better player. Tyler Lockett has the better opportunity. I love this pick. I have Lockett as my 14th receiver for fantasy this year. Okay, he's even ahead of Brandon Cooks, who you took two rounds earlier. I'm very, very high on Tyler Lockett, and I was really hoping he would fall to me. I had him. That's who I was going to take. I took Josh Gordon because I like the upside, and I'm just like, eh, let's go for it, but... I really wanted Lockett. This was the one pick where I really, he was, I'm very high on him, and you stole him right in front of me. So, good on you. I think Lockett's your flex. I also think, you probably have noticed this, Lockett and Penny play on the same team, so you probably don't want to start them together in your lineup. Maybe you don't know about that, but I don't like playing running backs and wide receivers who play on the same team. Basically, uh, I don't like starting them. Uh, the only real time it works out is like last year with Vivian with Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill. But again, that's an anomaly because, I mean, who's going to see freaking Patrick Mahomes throw 50 touchdowns? Like, yeah, okay. So I usually don't like doing that. 
So just keep that in mind because it limits how many how much scoring you can probably have. Like how many points do you think Seattle is going to score this week? Twenty eight. So if we go by that logic, you think they're going to score twenty eight points. Uh, let's say Lockett gets a touchdown. Do you think Petty's going to get one of the other touchdowns? Because there's only four to go around. So that's why. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I think Lockett's your flex, not Penny. I like Penny's talent. He's got to he's got to deal with Carson though. He's in a timeshare and he's on the back end of the timeshare. And this is where things get weird, which is really funny because we come off a really high that I'm just like, man, this is really great, and then we're just like, what? So we're gonna dabble these two picks together. You took Baker Mayfield and Dak Prescott. Um, on the surface, I like the Mayfield pick. I think it's a little early. You probably would have noticed by now. I think the only other person, so like by now what? Kyler Murray had been taken by Eileen. Um, Mahomes was taken by Vivian. I think the only other quarterback who had been taken, well, let's see, so it's round, it's round seven? So, yeah, okay, so Watson had been taken and Brady had been taken. Okay, so maybe there was a little bit of like, oh, there's a few quarterbacks going, maybe I want to take one. I don't mind the Mayfield pick. I think Mayfield has a lot of upside. Otherwise, I wouldn't have drafted OBJ in the second round. Mayfield threw for the most touchdowns as a rookie quarterback last year. And People who want to quote me on that say it's like, oh, he only had one more than the rookie record. Yeah, but he did it in 10 games, not 16, guys. So, yeah, I'm thinking that offense is going to really open up and he's going to have a big year. Um, so I might be low on him at the six rated quarterback, but I definitely have him higher than some of the quarterbacks taken. For example, I don't know, Tom Brady, who is Mr. Postseason, not Mr. Regular Season. So yeah, I don't, I like that pick. I don't, I wouldn't say I love the pick because I don't love taking quarterbacks, but it's considering where things were. It makes sense. It is unfortunate, I will say, the next pick is Devin Singletary. So, retrospect, really would have liked to have him. But I get it. Um, I don't mind the pick. I like Mayfield. I think he's a good player. I think he's going to be your starter all season. I think he can do some things that a lot of other, play a lot of other players, frankly, at quarterback can't do. I think, obviously, you have just outside a top five quarterback. Maybe he will be a top five fantasy fancy quarterback. So you're probably thinking is like, man, all of these, you've said pretty nice things about my team so far. I have, but I still have your team ranked 10th and that's where we're going to go now. So you took Dak Prescott in the next round. I really don't know why. Um, I have Prescott as the 15th rated fantasy quarterback. Um, and even if we like really, really Love Dak Prescott, I guess. Um, I don't know. You probably will have noticed that backup quarterbacks aren't really all that important in our league. So let's just take, we'll take Ryan and Robbie out, who do have backup quarterbacks. Ryan currently has Derek Carr, and Robbie has Mitchell Trubisky. We'll take them out just because they took them basically in the last round. They're filling up the last back end of their bench seeing if the guy has anything, and if he doesn't, you know, they can just simply cut them. It's very low draft capital. It's basically nothing. So we'll, we'll take them out because it really, I don't believe in those guys. It doesn't really matter. Um, we'll take out Vivian, too, because technically I ran her draft, and I picked Jameis Winston, who she cut for Phillip Rivers. Frankly, Phillip Rivers should be on free agency anyway. So we'll kind of disregard that as well. So none of those three teams with backup quarterbacks were really going to count um, because they can very easily cut them um, at any time. There's very little investment in them at all because Rivers was a free agent and the other two were basically last round picks. So that means the only other teams with backup quarterbacks are Eileen and Charlie. And the only other teams who used, well, Charlie's the only team that used two top, two picks in the top like 10 rounds on a quarterback. Charlie's never made the playoffs. Quarterback just isn't that important. Like, the only team that's ever won a fantasy championship in our league with a top five quarterback is Holly. And that was such an outlier team with OBJ and 
everything going on there. So, I don't know. I mean, I've been told you're probably thinking, you know, you can trade Dak Prescott, but there's 14 teams. I have like 12 of the teams having quarterbacks ahead of him. Um, so the only team I think I got, the only two teams I got basically with quarterbacks below Prescott are, I have Sarah technically with Jimmy G because I don't know what to make of him below Prescott because I do know what Prescott's going to be. And then, I don't even know who the other team is to be honest with you. I'd have to go back and check. But yeah, because Brian now has like, uh, yeah, Brian picked up Jameis Winston. So technically... Yeah. Who? Oh, I guess Mac, who has Jared Goff. I guess I, I have Dak Prescott again ahead of Jared Goff. Am I going to trade for anything of value, though, for Dak Prescott to start him over Jared Goff? No. Why? That's silly. I mean, I look at it this way. If I'm a bad team, I'm not trading for a quarterback. Because I need running backs, or I need a receiver, because I'm a bad team. And if I'm a good team, I'm still not trading for a quarterback, because I don't want to use any of the excess value I have on a quarterback. I want to go get something to supplement my team, like a star receiver or star running back. I'll go, again, I talk about, I, I nicknamed Josh Allen White Cam Newton. But Josh Allen was the number one quarterback in fantasy, the last four weeks of the season last year, he had a 40-point game against the Dolphins because he just runs the ball like Cam Newton. I would much rather just simply go on free agency and pick him up and trot him out against a terrible Dolphins team, by the way. They are freaking terrible now after today. Then use any sort of, like, anyone of value and trade for Dak Prescott. So... I, I don't really, I know it's your first year, so I'm not going to give you like a, a shit ton of like garbage for it, but backup quarterbacks don't matter. They just don't. You can stream quarterbacks. It's typically something that I do, but I don't even like using the bench spots to hold a second quarterback. I might do that this year because I really like Lamar Jackson, but it's still, <sighs> yeah, I'm not... You took Prescott in the eighth round. I got A.J. Green in the eighth round, all right? Justin Jackson's going to be a contributor for Ryan in the eighth round. Um, I don't know what Patrick's going to do with LaShawn McCoy. I still need to figure that out. But McCoy might be something in the eighth round. Heck, he might go to the freaking Chargers and light it up. I have no idea. Sarah got Dante Pettis, who's probably the number one receiver for the 49ers in the eighth round. Andre got Carson Wentz, who I like much more than Prescott. Um, in the eighth round is his starting quarterback. Um, there's just, there's a lot of meat on the bone. I don't know why we took a backup quarterback who maybe we could trade to someone who needs something at some point. I'm not trading anything of value for Dak Prescott. I don't know why someone would. Um, yeah, so I don't understand the pick, I guess, unless you want to use him as your bye week filler. I don't know. Um, then we get a little weird. So, yeah, we took Aaron Donald next round. Uh, defensive player. I like him. Good defensive tackle. Probably going to the Hall of Fame. He's voted top player in the NFL. He's really good. I just don't usually take defensive players that high just in case of injury. But, you know, you want to do it. He's really good. Stays healthy. You're set at defensive, defensive line for the season. Um, we took Austin Hooper. I like Hooper. Um, considering the fact that Patrick had taken freaking Vance McDonald in the fifth round and you're taking Hooper in the 10th round and I have Hooper as the number 10 tight end and I have McDonald as the number nine tight end, this is much better value. You did well for yourself. I'm very pleased with this pick. I don't love Hooper, but I think having the former Bucks head coach, Dirk Cutter, back as the offensive coordinator for Matt Ryan will help. I think Hooper can help now especially at tight end, trying to work the middle of the field, and I think he'll be a fantasy starter for you. So I don't mind the pick. After that, we take Cortland Sutton. I like Sutton. I think he's a good player. I think he can really... He has the talent to be a number one receiver in the NFL. 
he's stuck on a bad Broncos team with Joe Flacco as his quarterback, which is unfortunate. I think also he's stuck behind Emmanuel Sanders, who's a freak of nature, and I really like. Um, but I think before too long, I don't think I think you're a year early on Sutton. I think next year's like his real breakout year because usually it takes three years in the league to really come through. But I think I like Sutton's upside. I have him as the 47th wide receiver, but we're in the 11th round. Let's roll the dice. I get it. So I don't really have – when you get to the double-digit rounds, just take guys you like. Just don't be scared and just be like, oh, I want to take this safe player who like will be a contributor on my team. Don't think like that. I don't give a damn if the guy on my bench is going to be a quote-unquote contributor for my bye week. I want to take the upside guy who can possibly win me a championship. Emmanuel Sanders gets hurt. The Broncos magically trade get convince Andrew Luck to come out of retirement and play for them. Boom, Cortland Sutton's like a top 20 receiver. Will that happen? No. The chances of that happening are basically zero. But it's not without the, it's not out of the realm of possibility. So yeah, I don't I don't mind the Cortland Sutton pick. Um, we took Deion Jones next. Really good linebacker if he stays healthy. Andre had him when he won a championship. He wasn't healthy last year. Really good linebacker, though. Uh, like him a lot. Um, we're taking defensive players. Okay, that's fine. Um, we took Justin Tucker. We're going to avoid that because the kicker doesn't matter. We took Jesse Bates. Good safety for the Bengals. Uh, really, the back-end picks are a little weird. Like Dexter Williams, I'm not in love with. I think he's good, um, but he's like the third running back on Green Bay. You could probably cut him because I don't see him getting very many touches behind Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams. Not that I like Jamal Williams because I don't because he's trash, but he's like – Dexter Williams is like my 65th um, player on my board, which is why I don't like taking defensive players higher than – or I don't like taking defensive players before I clean out most of my bench because there's a lot of value there, but – Hey, um, then we take Deshaun Hamilton. I like Hamilton. I don't love him. He's not the most amazing thing in the world, but I mean, he's on Denver too. So he's like their number three receiver behind Sutton. So he can play. I think he'll be a contributor. I just don't love the offense that he's in, but beggars can't be chooser. Um, last pick. I like Frank Gore. Considering today's events, Frank Gore has now definitely got a role in Buffalo, probably getting 8 to 10 carries a game, maybe more. Uh, it's not too long ago. He was a 1,000-yard rusher. He is the ghost of Frank Gore. He's probably going to the Hall of Fame, um, and he's going to contribute because Devin Singletary is just a rookie, and he definitely can't carry the full load by himself. Uh, I think that Frank Gore is a really good player, and I think that He's the Wiley veteran that will teach that backfield a lot. And I think for the last round pick, you can't do any better than that. I technically have him as like barely a top 50 running back, but I don't care about that because single carry, single Terry gets hurt. This is Gore's job, and Gore has shown throughout his career he can do it. So I appreciate that pick. All of that, all of that being said, why, oh, why do I have your rank? team ranked 10th it sounded like i said mostly good things glowing things about your team so why so low well the reason is kind of twofold you are very very risky with injury um more risky than probably i would say any other team uh dalvin cook okay so We'll say who's not at risk for injury. We'll, we'll start there. Technically speaking, Antonio Brown is not at risk for injury because he's always been healthy, but he just literally got... He's going into the season injured because he basically froze his feet. So can't really count that. Can we say James White? Not really, no. James White has gotten hurt in his Patriots career, and he's gotten hurt when he was at Wisconsin. Can we say Dalvin Cook, who missed games the last two years? No, no, we cannot. Um, how about Brandon Cooks? Nope. Rashad Penny? Nah. -uh. Lockett? Okay. Yeah, we can say Lockett. I just named your core. What I guess I'm saying is I don't think your core is going to last you through the season. Now, that being said, I don't think my core is going to last me through the season either. Um, 
Go look at my wide receivers. Tell me who's not injury prone. I'll tell you who's not. None of them. They're all injury prone. But that's going to test your depth. And you don't have much depth. And I think that's the biggest issue. I like Cortland Sutton. I like Deshaun Hamilton. I like Dexter Williams. I like Frank Gore. I don't believe... I mean, I guess Frank Gore maybe now, but the others, I don't know if they could ever be like a fantasy bi-week filler even because they're just, they're kind of not really much contributors. Uh, And it's very worrisome to have a lot of players who are injury prone. Um, I have a lot of players who are injury prone. Um, I'm very worried about my team. I think you should be very worried about your team. I think also this is, I don't want to say rude, but the Prescott pick, I've never seen, I've never played fantasy with you, Rich. Okay, only a few people in the road rec who are in our league have played fantasy with you. So I don't have any real like idea of what to go on. Like even Stefan, I have half a season of sample size of seeing him make roster moves and having a general idea of, this is what Stefan's doing. This is what he's looking for. By the way, Stefan, you're Stefan Diggs for TJ Yeldon. Don't do that. All right. Running backs are gold. I don't know why you didn't take more running backs. Anyway, back to our regular schedule program. I don't have anything to go on, Rich. So I can only go by what you drafted. So you taking Prescott in the eighth round rubs me the wrong way. And the reason why it rubs me the wrong way is because it tells me I, don't, I can't trust you with roster management roster construction like I know based on simple consistency I know Brian will get his team in the playoffs I know that based on consistency Ryan will get his team in the playoffs I know based on consistency Robbie will probably get his team in the playoffs I know even with Patrick's boomer bust early in the season I can tell when Patrick's got a team that's booming I know with Andre's best available players, I know when his team is hitting. With this team, I'm just weary because I don't have anything to go on. And that Prescott pick tells me that I'm not sure if you're able to almost pillar through free agency and find the gold that you will need to supplement your team because it doesn't have that depth. Like an example of that would be last year, first week of the season comes and goes. Brian goes out, spends 20 bucks on Philip Lindsay. At the time, most people in the league are just like, wow, that is a lot of money to spend on Philip Lindsay. Meanwhile, I, looking at the game film, I'm just like, that's a lot of money to spend, but Philip Lindsay seems pretty good. And I have Royce Freeman, and hopefully Royce Freeman can get a timeshare with this guy, but I think Lindsay's sticking around. Lindsay stuck around was a top 15 running back the entire season. Um, And Brian identified that. And he grabbed that before anyone else did. And he knew, he recognized the value of that. I don't know if you'll be able to do that. You're welcome to come watch football with us on Sundays, and I'll point things out to you. But that Prescott pick is just, I know I'm harping on one pick, and I don't mean to. But I don't have anything else to go on. Um, And the rest of the picks, like the Antonio Brown pick, is just very... You left a lot. I'd much rather have Michael Thomas or Julio Jones, or Devontae Adams. There were much better, safer receivers on the board. I took OBJ. You don't have to take that risk. That's okay. But even still, the other guys probably have higher upside, and they're safer than Antonio Brown. I don't know what we were doing taking Brown. I like James White a lot, but he's still in a running back by committee in New England. Even if I see that he has a role, it still kind of sucks, because what's he going to get? Like, 12 touches a game like you can trot out any number of guys and they're all very talented because Belichick's a great coach and it just it's really hard to rely on that and have that guy be my starter and hoping every single week he's going to get enough workload to justify him being a starter on my team when other teams in our league are like trotting out like you know, Max trotting out like Damian Williams every week as his number two running back, and he's the number one running back on the freaking Kansas City Chiefs. Like, that's, it's hard to reconcile with that. Um, 
it's hard when like Sarah's trotting out freaking James Conner and Aaron Jones. I love Aaron Jones. Is James White going to give me any kind of production like that? Does he have the upside to justify this kind of like high value pick of draft capital? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he was the best player on the board. Um, but that kind of just goes back to why did we take Antonio Brown in the second round? If we could take a second running back, we really could have gotten someone very handy. Or if we took like a star receiver like Devontae Adams, that'd be really nice. And then seeing what else came down the board, that could have really, really worked in your favor. Um, it just – I really like Tyra Lockett. I don't want to get me wrong. I think Dalvin Cook was the best player on the board that you could take. I think that Antonio Brown is going to the Hall of Fame. I think that James White has a defined role. Uh, he may not have the upside, but he's got a good enough floor to be a contributor on your team. I think Brandon Cooks is the best receiver on the Rams. I think Tyler Lockett is a sneaky good player who's going to be a top 15 receiver and will be your flex and help you throughout the season. I think Rashad Penny is in a timeshare and he'll get enough touches per game to justify that and possibly be more than what he's shown because they believe in him. All of that can be true. And even still, I don't have you at high because I just don't know if your team's going to be able to stay healthy. I just can't. I don't. There's no way for me to reconcile that this team is going to stay healthy. And the Prescott pick, again, it just makes me wonder, what happens if you get hit by injury? Will you be able to pillar through free agency and find the players you need to find to basically help your team, to basically save your season? I, I mean, if you want a case in point of that, I was without. I took Aaron Jones last year. Uh, he was suspended two games. I lost Leonard Fournette in the first game of the season for like eight weeks. Um, I think I started the year like zero and four. But even still, I barreled through free agency. I worked trades. I pillared through people. I trade for Todd Gurley, who was the number one fantasy running back, and I still lost that trade, which is ridiculous to think about now. But I knew that I could figure out a way to piece together a team and just, if I could get in the playoffs, I could really do something. And so I didn't win a championship, and that is unfortunate, and that's a credit to Sarah and her ability to create a team that was very, very good. Um, but that just leads me back to, this is your first year in the league. It's going to be hard for you. I think injuries will hit you. I don't know if you'll be able to reconcile with them. Sarah struggled in her first year of the league. It's okay. Um, some teams do really well. Andre won a championship. Brian came in second. Other teams really struggle. I don't think you're going to really struggle. I think you're a good enough player that you'll figure it out over time. I just think it might take you some time. Um, that's why I have you 10th, because I don't really know. I don't have a lot to go on. Um, I, think Patrick, <laughs> I think Patrick's team is better than yours, um, simply in the sense that I know Patrick will be able to deal with injuries if the team's any good and quickly be able to figure things out. Also, him getting freaking Devin Singletary as a starting running back is just... It's very painful for me to reconcile with that because I took Deion Lewis before taking Singletary because I didn't want another rookie running back, and now Singletary is going to be a starting running back, and I'm just... I, I should have taken Devin Singletary. But I have Patrick's team being better than yours because... Hopkins, Evans, their star players. Carry on Johnson if he stays healthy is a really good player. Having Lindsay and now having Singletary is really good depth. Um, depth, depth, depth. You need depth. Uh, you don't have much running back depth. You're really, really hoping that White and Cook stay healthy. And I think that's not a good gamble because chances are one of them will go down. And if White goes down, you're not going to get the Patriots running back to replace him because there is really no Patriots running back to replace him because it's a committee. Um, if Cook goes down, you don't have his handcuff. You are in big trouble. Um, Cook is the centerpiece of your team. You are relying on him to stay healthy the whole year. And I like Cook. I think he's a good player, but he hasn't he hasn't been healthy for a whole year in his career. Um, that's a big gamble. It's a really big gamble. 
Uh, so I like your team. Players on your team, I would consider taking. Players on your team, I would consider having. But I like high risk. I don't know if high risk is what you like. So that's why I have your team 10th. I'm not saying you can't make the playoffs. You possibly could. Uh, if you supplement your team correctly, injuries don't hit, you could. I don't know if you'll win a championship. Who's to say that there's a lot of luck that goes into that? Really, it's just getting to the playoffs and then rolling the dice and seeing what happens. So I think a successful year for you is making the playoffs, but that's not the expectation I have for you. The only expectation I have for you is maybe going like 5-8, and 6-7. and seven. Um, There are four very bad teams this year, so I think that's a reasonable expectation to go 6-7 and seven and to possibly in the mix to make the playoffs. Um, you could possibly do better if I'm really wrong about Antonio Brown and he turns out to be the number one fantasy receiver that he's been consistently. You could be pushing top five, top three fantasy teams. I, I see that upside. But more so than a lot of the other teams, I see a lot of downside. And that's why I have you that low. Um, but I hope you don't take offense to this. These are just my thoughts. I could be completely wrong. I was Wrong last year, I gave a good grade to Andre, and then his team exploded once David Johnson went down. But that kind of just shows you really need running back depth, and you don't have a lot of it. You just have, really, three running backs. <sighs> and one of them's a backup. So, I mean, yeah, you technically got Dexter Williams, but you, you can probably cut him. You got Frank Gore. Okay, so four running backs since Frank Gore is now the backup in Buffalo, but it's still, it's, it's worrisome. I don't want to have to start Frank Gore at any time uh, during a fantasy season. I like Frank Gore, um, but I don't want to do that. That's not good. Starting Frank Gore at flex at any point in time is not good. That, that says bad things about my team. So yeah, this is really long. I don't know if anyone will watch this this long, but if you do, I give you credit. I'll see if I can turn out more of these. Maybe I'll even do one tonight. It's not even 10. So that's where I have you, Rich. Oh, draft grade. Yeah. So I gave Patrick a C minus. I'm giving you a C minus. Um, passing. You have an opportunity to get to the playoffs. I just don't. I don't have you there. At least not now. Maybe things will change. I don't. I just don't. I don't have enough data to go on. I, I've never seen you work free agency in a league, and free agency in a league is hard. So, good luck this year, though. I I hope I hope good things for you. I think with enough time, you can learn. Um, just stick with Sarah. She'll point you in the right direction. <laughs>